as crews continue to spray water in an effort to prevent flare-ups, the refinery parking lot sits largely empty. Yesterday, flames shot into the air after an explosion that rocked the city. If you stood on the steps, uh, you could see the flames as well through the trees. Gordon Dalzell lives half a kilometer away. He's an environmental activist and for years sat on Irving Oil's Community Liaison Committee. If I had to make the decision now, would we move here? Uh, I don't think so. Dalzell moved to the neighborhood in 1979. The refinery was here then too, but it has since expanded significantly. There's a similar situation in Regina, where the co-op refinery complex is also situated near a residential neighborhood. A lot of attention has been on the transport of oil uh, by rail, uh, marine transport and, and pipeline, of course. But refinery safety, because the incidents are relatively infrequent, um, it uh, doesn't get a lot of attention. But Sean Tucker, who researches refinery safety, says explosions at Canadian refineries are happening more often, partly due to aging infrastructure. That's uh, problematic because uh, over time it can lead to holes in the piping and gases or liquids escaping. And if there's a uh, ignition source, then you can have, uh, you have the potential for a catastrophic explosion. Tucker also says refineries need to communicate openly with communities. Dalzell says so do emergency management officials. And people were getting anxious and concerned, and the MO have, have to improve, significantly improve, their communication strategies. He and many others say the information flow was too slow. Citizens have spoken loudly uh, that there, there were gaps in their view on communication and, and I agree and we'll be reviewing it. As for Gordon Dalzell, he says he's not moving, no matter the risk. Kayla Hounsel, CBC News, St. John.